Hey everyone, I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I'm back. It's the new year and I'm ready to give you all the advice that I have. Today's video is going to focus on kind of chatting with you guys about what is more to a sonographer besides just scanning. Your sole purpose is to be scanning ultrasounds and doing diagnostic imaging for a doctor. However, there's other things that are involved with it that you don't really think about. So here's some things that you don't think about as a sonographer that's also part of your job. Number one, one of the biggest things as a sonographer is your job is to not diagnose ever. It is not your job to be a doctor. You're not supposed to tell the patient any results. You know, your job is solely just to take pictures for diagnostic imaging. Images gets interpreted by a doctor or radiologist in order to be diagnosed, okay? So of course, like in different settings, there are places where they depend on the sonographer very much to write reports and to see what their thoughts are as far as that is. But your job is not to diagnose, so try not to play doctor because it will get you in trouble. As a sonographer, we do write our reports. What a report is, like a preliminary report as far as what are our sonographic findings, right? Your job is to basically describe as best as you can what you're looking at. Some imaging places, they have a radiologist who writes the report. Some places, a sonographer has to write the report. It kind of changes wherever you're working at. You're gonna need to be able to describe the size of it, how many millimeters, centimeters, the location of it, and what the general appearance or texture looks like. So especially in the sonography field, you definitely learn the sonography medical terms as far as like if something's hypoechoic, anechoic, heterogeneous, homogeneous. Those are simple little fun terms that we love to use every single day just to describe what we're looking at. Don't be nervous about learning all those words. You will learn it and it'll be like literally a second language to you. For example, if you are scanning a liver and you see like some type of like cystic mass on it, you want to be able to describe it. You can't say there's a cystic mass on the liver. You can say like there's a cystic like structure in the medial aspect of the liver in the left lobe, something like that. And you have to describe where the location is just in case if they come back again to get more imaging, the next sonographer is going to know where it is and what it looks like. Your job it should never be to overanalyze what it is. Your job is to basically describe it to help a doctor diagnose it. When doing an ultrasound exam, you have to be very cautious on not missing anything, okay? So in your reports, you have to include exactly what you saw or didn't see. It's very important to share what you didn't see because it also saves your butt just in case like if you miss something. Because with sonograms, it's a pretty like limited imaging modality. It doesn't get everything like it does with like a CT or MRI because it's so um, user dependent. Of course, always scan all the way through of whatever you're scanning. Uh, scan through the organs, sweep in and out to make sure that you didn't miss anything. Please never try to rush an exam because that will bite you in the butt. A lot of places love cine loops. Cine loops are basically like a quick little video clip of what you're doing. So those cine loops are actually very beneficial for the doctor because they could actually see in real time what you're looking at. Some other things they don't tell you that you need to do besides scanning is that you are responsible for your exam room. Every single place that I've been to as far as if it's a hospital, a clinical setting, it doesn't matter. But most of the time you you are in control of the maintenance of your exam room as far as if you have supplies like if you have drape sheets drape sheets or towels uh, gel bottles you need to make sure that your gel is always filled ultrasonic gel is the basics of what we use when we're doing an exam if you don't have any then that kind of sucks it is our responsibility to make sure we are supplied at all times of course and especially during this pandemic you need to be sure to, that you are wiping off your transducer probe before and after every patient make sure that you're wiping down your exam table just make sure that you're practicing good health safety for each and every one of your patients when you're scanning Another important thing that you need to do when you are scanning are little things that you need to do before you grab your patient. For example, you always need to be able to review patient history, but basically what you want to see in your patient history is to see if they had any previous imaging, if they have any underlying conditions that may affect the ultrasound or some things that you need to know, if they've ever had prior surgeries beforehand. Always know your patient before you take them back because if you kind of just grab them blindly, you'll be trying to play catch up when you're having conversation with them. For example, let's say a patient has had um, an ovary removed and you're doing a pelvic ultrasound, right? And you're sitting here trying to look for these ovaries the whole time and then, you know, at the end of the day, the patient has already had their ovaries removed. A big reason to also review the patient history is because there's always a reason why the patient is getting ultrasound done. Um, that would be the diagnostic or referral 
reason of why they're coming in. So if you are doing an exam that has nothing to do with the referral, that also causes a big issue with their insurance because there's a reason why they have a referral. There's a reason why they're coming to see you to get an ultrasound. For example, if a patient is having abnormal levels of their LFT, it could be a reason that they need to get a abdominal ultrasound to look at their liver. Let's say you just didn't look the, at the referral and you just did like some random ultrasound, it wouldn't make any sense because it wouldn't be any beneficial to the patient of you scanning their thyroid. Also just little things of knowing their patient history as far as like an OBGYN, you need to know when the patient's first day of their last menstrual cycle was. That's really important with scanning GYN because whatever time they are in their menstrual cycle determines what you're looking at as far as their endometrium lining. For example, if they just ended their period, then their lining should be very thin. And if you are scanning them and you see that their lining is really thick, there could be underlying things hiding underneath there as far as fibroids or polyps. Know your patient before you get them. Some other things that sonographers do in order to assist in a doctor are some surgical procedures. There are some procedures that require ultrasound guidance, like a paracentesis, a thoracentesis, biopsies, stuff like that. So those are things that need to be ultrasound guided and the doctor will basically be doing a procedure and you will be assisting them to be their eyes internally. Let's say a doctor is about to do a biopsy and they can't go in blind. They might know the general area of where to biopsy. However, they're not gonna know how deep or where to grab the sample from. So you just have to do your best and follow that needle, make sure that you don't lose them, make sure that the doctor is going just as deep enough in order to grab the sample. Some other examples that I have done as far as procedural things under ultrasound guidance is IUD insertions. So some doctors don't do IUD insertions under ultrasound guidance, but the place that I currently work at, we do. With the IUD, there are different ways that I help the doctor with guiding the IUD in. So you kind of guide them to make sure it goes all the way to the top of the fundus. Make sure that the doctor just doesn't perforate through because if they go too high up, they could perforate the uterus. Um, some other things that you could also keep in mind is that most of the time we don't really work with a lot of blood or other bodily fluids. The most blood that I ever work with is probably like vaginal bleeding when you do like internal transvaginal exams. There's never a time where like you are in a super intense surgical setting unless it's like an emergency or like an ER situation, but also it kind of depends on where you work and working in this field you do see a lot of sad stuff so don't just think that you'll be scanning babies all day and it's going to be butterflies and rainbows okay uh, your job is to find abnormalities find weird things find pathologies find diseases it gets like very emotional if you see something really bad and you can't say anything you have to develop professionalism because you technically are not supposed to give the patient results like never you're never supposed to give the patient's results so if you're scanning a patient they're just like oh do you see anything you basically have to act dumb and just say you know like the doctor will go over the results with you they'll write the report and then they'll let you know what they see but try to limit what you say as far as don't say a patient has cancer because you see something scary in ultrasound it's not your job to say that all right guys so i just wanted to share these quick little tips that you might not know about sonography when you go into the field because it's not all about scanning babies so I just want you guys to be aware of what you're getting yourself into, what is entailed in the field. And of course, there are plenty of more things behind the scenes, but those are just simple things that you should always consider. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Instagram at ChristyDMS. Be sure to let me know what else you guys want to see. All right, guys. Bye.